Hi, I'm Bill Crocus from Hanson Industrial Peoria. Today we're going to talk about the different types of chemical injectors. The first is the high pressure injection chemical injector. Basically this unit gets mounted to the inlet side of where you, the water goes in. The garden hose goes in here. There's an adjustment screw and then this is where it draws in chemical. It will flow in at the full flow of water and then the pressure washer will generate the pressure and give you high pressure chemical. The second one is another high pressure. This hose over here mounts to the inlet side of the pump. When you open this valve, this hose would draw, sucking chemical through here through the inlet of the pump so when it comes out, it will also be high pressure. The third is called downstream chemical injection. This is after the pump, after the coil, on the tail end before it goes through the hose and the gun. What happens is when you would lower the flow of water and bring the pressure down with the variable pressure wand, it's actually not so much the flow, it's the actual pressure drop, which causes a spring and a ball inside here to drop and draw the flow of chemical through it and you get chemical applied downstream but at low pressure standard volume of water pressure coming out and that's called downstream and then when you take the pressure and you bring the pressure back up again either with the variable pressure wand end or a nozzle change to come back to high pressure it shuts this off. The fourth and final is the foam cannon. There's two different types of foam cannons. One that has a hose and one that has a tank. This hose would draw chemical through it same way like the downstream with low pressure and then add air and foam it. The other one would have a container filled with chemical that also when you uh, draw chemical it would be low pressure and it would get the flow of the chemical in there mixed with the water and go ahead and spray it on and these are on the tail end of the wand. This would go on the end of the wand uh, like you would put your nozzle. Your nozzle would come out and this would go into it. This is the first injector. This injector has an arrow on it, so there's a flow pattern. Water in, water out. It has two adjustments on there. The first adjustment allows you to control on any gallon per minute from like one gallon per minute to about six to get it to go ahead and draw through the actual chemical injector on the top. So there's actually two different parts, but this is an inline for any pressure washer without a flow tank but it'll give you high pressure and it goes on the inlet side of the water. Some people sometimes mess around with the adjustment knob and you can cavitate the pressure washer which is bad. Some people um, play around with both knobs. The first and most important thing is adjusting the knob to get the proper flow so that it's always drawing. The second knob up here is that when you open it to draw chemical or close chemical but it's always done under high pressure, whatever the pressure washer can put out. So if it's a four gallon a minute at 2,000 or two and a half gallon at 3,000, this can work on any one of those pressure washers and can be adjusted to go ahead and do that. The second high pressure chemical is used with a flow tank. This one, this unit right here has a flow tank. This black uh, device over here is a flow tank. Water comes into the flow tank first, fills up with water, and then the pump draws from that flow tank causing a suction. So therefore you can have a valve that can be open and closed on the inlet side of the pump to have suction and flow chemical and water together to give you high pressure on the tail end. So unlike the first one that's force fed with a garden hose, this one has a suction to give you high pressure. The third one again is a downstream chemical injector. This one would be located on the outlet side of the pump. Inlet side, outlet side. It looks like this, has a chemical hose that feeds into the chemical. Has an adjustment valve. One complete turn, it's wide open. And they usually draw at about uh, 15 to 20 to one in ratio. So you have to pre-adjust your chemical accordingly. And pretty much any of these, you have to pre-adjust the chemical so you get the right dilution. So that's located right there. Then it comes out of the hose and to activate it, you would have a device like this. If you can see the end, you have a soap nozzle and a high pressure nozzle. This one you would have to roll forward to slipstream this pipe 
and cause variable pressure, the pressure to drop, so this to go ahead and open up, and so you have both pipes open, so that you would activate and draw from that chemical injector. Basically, there's a little ball and spring and O-ring that under low pressure, it slides open and starts to draw. Under high pressure, it closes. If you did not have a variable pressure one, look at this nozzle, look at the hole. Same size as that. If I took this nozzle off and had just a straight wand set up on there, and I didn't have a variable pressure wand, as soon as I pulled the trigger, this would do the same thing and activate that chemical injector. The final one is the foam cannon again. The foam cannon can be mounted right on the end of the nozzle, the two different ones. For example, I'll just show you this one because I have a nipple already located on there. The foam cannon gets mounted right here so that when you get ready to wash, you will squeeze the trigger. It will grab the chemical and the air at the same time at low pressure and flow out there to go ahead and foam, just like you see in a car wash, air and chemical to foam up on the side of a piece of equipment. And it actually hangs on there and falls off until you get a chance to go ahead and rinse it off. Don't want the foam to go ahead and dry, but we'll talk about that when we actually show you and demonstrate what it looks like and how it works. Before we go out and actually demonstrate the different chemical injectors, we're going to talk about detergents. The first one is a uh, has alkaline, has butyl, and has a surfactant on it. It's made to work with pressure washers. It's a great degreaser. It does a really good job of being a general cleaner in a diluted fashion. Straight through the chemical injector, 20 to 1, which most chemical injectors put out is 20 to 1. It is a good degreaser and almost a no brush cleaner. If you want to dilute it um, half and half, for instance, you would basically have one part chemical, one part water, and then, so that's two parts, two times 20, that'd be 40 to one. So that would make it not as strong, but that's how you would get the right ratio. So if you wanted it 60 to one, one part chemical, two parts water, three times 20, 60 to one. But straight out of here is awesome for a degreaser, awesome for a, a no brush wash for painted and stainless uh, steel. Um, if you want to do something with um, a wax, for instance. We have a, has surfactant, uh, has alkaline, but it also has carnauba wax. Carnauba wax is that paste wax that you use for waxing your vehicles by hand. It's actually broken down into the liquid form inside here. Um, this product here can be used with heat or cold water. The more heat, you will actually get a higher um, reaction with heat. In cold, you'll actually, not as, not as high as a reaction. When you're using this wash and wax, or our product while wash and dry, because it has that wax in it, it's better not to use it with heat. The reason is it'll break down that wax and take it out of the product. So you want to use it with cold water only. So can use it with hot water or cold, better with hot water. Use this one uh, with cold water. This dilution is about 120 to one. So you're breaking it out quite a bit before you get it. So like about three quarters of a gallon to four and a quarter gallons of water and then 20 to one. So you're really breaking it out. Uh, this product does a really good job and it leaves a nice little wax finish on there without you having to put it on there when it's all said and done. Both can be used through the chemical injectors. If you use a Dawn soap, like someone mixed some Dawn soap at their house, that has so much surfactant in it, it will plug up the chemical injectors. Basically what it's going to go ahead and do, it'll gum up the little balls and spring that's located inside the chemical injector and that can be a problem. These will not do that. This product, this is an acid. Acids are used for uh, polished or non-polished aluminum um, or for cleaning frames that you get ready for before you want to paint them uh, or taking like FRP walls that are filled with scum and minerals and cleaning that off. Acids do a great job. This is, has hydrofluoric acid, 25% by volume. Really, really strong. So one or straight will clean almost anything but it reacts really fast. So you gotta be on it, can't let it dry and then you rinse it off. 5 to 1, 10 to 1, 20 to 1, to 40 to 1, which if you want to do polished aluminum, you'd probably be on the 40 to 1 range because you don't want to be damaging all that polish work that you did. The nice thing about to, to know about this product is you don't want the product hot. So on a day where the sun is beating down, you want to make sure you're in a cool, dark, or, or damp area before you apply this product. If you do it on hot, hot days, 
it will dry immediately and you'll get bad results. So I always recommend everybody, you think it's going to rain today? Good day to use it. Or it is rainy, good day to use it. Because um, the rain by nature will help give you a little bit of um, a rinsing effect that's almost spot free because it has enough, all that TDS inside there. And then we'll talk about the uh, spot free rinse too because we offer those as well. This product has to be put on with a pump up sprayer. So you have to calculate what you want. You're not using the chemical injectors. You cannot use that in a chemical injector. You will damage it just like chlorine bleach. You can't use that through a chemical injector. You'll damage it too. But these two products you can. Hopefully that gives you a little general understanding. I will do videos in the future on these that goes a little bit more in detail. But let's talk about uh, spot free rinse. Before we go out there, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Uh, spot free rinse. When you wash with uh, uh, regular water, you're going to have TDS, total dissolved solids still in the water. And if you wash with softened water, softened water still has uh, total dissolved solids to TDS. The only way to take that all out is to use spot free rinse, which is RO water. It purifies it and takes almost everything out and rips it all out. We actually make an RO system that stores it in the tank and then you can distribute it and spray it on the tail end just like in a car wash. Car wash is stage, you come through, they wash, they rinse, um, and then they do spot free rinse so that when you drive off, um, your car still looks good and you never had to have a towel dried or anything on there. That spot free rinse, I'll get 95 to 99 percent of all the spots off your vehicle when you're done washing it. So if you want the end result to be perfect, you got to use spot free rinse. We will show you spot free rinse today. Uh, I know we're going to talk about the chemical injectors and how the different ones work. We did talk about the chemicals, dilution ratios, which one works best, which ones can work with a chemical injector, which ones can't. And then we talked about the wash process and the final will be spot free rinse. We will show you everything outside. First I'm going to show you high pressure chemical. I'm not going to show you both styles, I'm just going to show you how high pressure is applied and then I'll show you the downstream and then I'll show you the foam. High pressure first. One thing I need to make a point of, if you're doing vehicles that have wings and stuff like that, make sure they have been cooled off with fresh water first. This has been sitting here for a while and it's about 40 degrees out, so they're nice and cool. We're always going to apply the chemical from the bottom up and then rinse from the top down. Here we go. downstream chemical injector. I'm going to roll this wand forward and draw a chemical and you'll see it come out at full pressure. done washing and rinsing, usually with softened water or good quality water, we're going to go ahead and do the spot rinse. Spot rinse basically just applying a thin layer of our own water from top to bottom to rinse the TDS off. Then take close attention to the cold areas to get all the smoke off. And then you can let the vehicle just dry on its own or you can squeegee it off or if you want to towel dry it. With spot free rinse, you really don't have to do that. That's pretty much how to use the different types of chemical injectors, as well as a little bit about chemical and dilution and actual spot free rinse. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for being a part of it, and thanks uh, for all you do, and hopefully, you do business with Hanson Industrial Peoria.